uh, this is going to be the next video in the series. Uh, I believe it's going to be video number eight. And in this video, we're going to go basically over the basic uh, characteristics of the window procedure, of the main window procedure. Okay, so which basically is the signature here of the main window procedure. So it has the L result, which is a long value callback, which is standard call. I will go over that a few moments again. A window procedure, which is the name, and then handle to window, unsigned, unsigned integer message, okay, W parameter, which is basically a, a, a long value, I'm sorry, word value, okay, so short, but right now it's the same, they are basically the 32 bits, so you can integer value, and then L parameter is uh, L parameter, which is basically 32 bit value at, the, at this time also, okay. So let's uh, first thing first. Let's uh, let's see how that whole thing links to our program. So our window procedure is basically it's added to our window class structure. So here we dec we linking the our window class structure that we creating here to our uh, to the window procedure is linked to our window class structure, and based on that window class structure, okay, we are creating our window right here, okay. So what happens then? The operating system basically links our window to our window procedure, okay, through our window class structure. So it's linked there. And then here we have the implementation of our window procedure, which is bare bones. Okay, here's our implementation. Doesn't do much. And I will go over in a little bit more detail from, from the beginning so what's happening there, okay? So let's go back here. Okay, so let's start with this thing. I need to make us some corrections. I miss misspoke before about the callback option. So what the callback? It's a standard call. Callback is basically a standard call. And what it is, it's basically it tells the compiler how to pass the parameters onto the functions, and who is responsible for cleaning up the stack when the parameters are passed. So in our case. The, I misspoke. I think uh, I mentioned that the standard call made uh, right to left argument that the argument passing order is from right to left. I, I believe I mentioned it was from left to right. Okay, so it's actually from right to left. So it goes, so the, at the bottom of the stack would be L param, then W param message, and then handle to the window would be on the top of the stack. Okay, and then the callee is actually responsible for cleaning the stack. So when the function exits. The function is responsible for cleaning up the stack, but as far as we are concerned, we don't have to worry about that. This is done by the compiler, not us. So we just have to mention that. Okay. So yeah. So let's look at this here. So here's the situation. Let's uh, let me compile this program here. Let me run it for you. So as you can notice, let me go back here. There's lots of messages were sent and posted to the uh, to the system here when we created our window. So those are all the messages here that were sent to, uh, to the system, to, uh, by the system to us. So here's what happens. Uh, like when we create our window, windows themselves will send a bunch of messages to initiate the window information for us. So like VM get min max info, VM non client create. So you know the, this area of the title bar creates non-client calculate size, VM create message, VM show window, VM activate app, VM NC activate, get icon, and so forth. So you can look up, you will have to basically, when it comes to Windows, you will have to do lots of, lots of looking up of the what those messages mean, the meaning of them, what the parameters associated with those messages uh, are, and what value should be returned. Okay, so like memorizing this, it's not, not optimal. Eventually, with time, you're gonna get better handle of it. But at the moment, you just need to know that lots of messages are being sent. You know, and most of the messages are not gonna be processed by you. You're gonna just pass them on to the default window procedure. Okay, as in this case. So here's our window procedure. So what happens here? We, in our case, we only processing one message, which we call the set cursor message. I'm not going to go over that at this moment. I will later on in the video. I will cover that. And uh, then anything that's not not uh, processed by us, we pass pass that message to the default window procedure right here. 
okay? And default window procedure has implementation for every message. And so what it does is basically it's gonna pass on, uh, basically it's gonna give you the default uh, behavior for that message, okay? So you can think of it of this way here. This is like if something arrives at the window procedure, let's say a message arrives here, it's gonna go through our switch statement, okay? And it's gonna to check to see if there is a message that's that we are processing. In this case, there is no message that we are processing. The switch statement is empty. So what happens here, we, we basically pass on that message with the parameters onto the default window procedure. And the default window procedure is handling the behavior of that message for us, okay? So the default window procedure implements the default behavior for all possible messages the function can receive. So if our window procedure does not process the message, we forward this message to, to this default window procedure, okay? So yeah, so let's go back here. So let's see how it works. So here are the messages. So let's see how it works. So here's this thing. We have our, our screen, our operating system, and our code. So on the screen, we have a mouse in the client area. And let's say we move that mouse in the client area and moves like so, right? So the first thing that will happen, the operating system is gonna place in the in in the post message queue for our window because when we create when we created our window, the operating system created a message queue for our window. It created a couple message queues. Okay. But we're gonna look at the post message queue first for our window. And whenever we move move a mouse in our window, the post the system will place a WM window message mouse move in our post message queue. So what happens here is that we go to our code and we're going to run our message loop. So here's our message loop. So first we're going to declare a message structure. We have the bool value for return value. So to, for correct implementation, we need that. So what happens, get message. First thing we're going to retrieve by calling the get message, we're going to retrieve the mouse move message from the message queue and place it into the message structure. Then when the get message function returns, okay, we're going to check the return value to see if it's negative one, which just means if get message returns negative one, it means it returns an error message to us. So we're going to exit basically, we're going to call return zero and we're going to exit the program. We're not going to give any notification I have at the moment, like I have to save space, I have to delete that. The, the mess, normally you would put like a message box saying why, it, what type of error it was, and so forth. So we're going to worry about that in the future videos, okay? But assuming that uh, the return value is not negative one, we're going to go and dispatch this message to our window procedure. So from here, this message is going to be sent to our window procedure, which the Windows operating system keeps track. So each window has its own window procedure. So then we're going to forward this mouse move message along with uh, the parameter in the structure. So that structure is going to be forwarded. So we're going to, for the handle to our window, from the structure, the message itself, what type of its mouse move, okay, the W parameter associated with that message, and then L parameter associated with that message. So that message is going to be forwarded to our window procedure. Our window procedure then, we're going to call the switch statements, and based on the message, because it's an integer value, we're going to have like a switch statement. We're going to determine which uh, which switch which which switch statement to call. In our case, we have only one option, which is the default option. In that case, we're passing all that information, okay, to our message, the handle to the window, the W parameter and the parameter. We're passing that information to our default window procedure for processing. So we not so the we basically we're letting the system process that message for us, okay, by default. Now let's go here. Now let's assume we're actually going to process that message. So with the same situation, the same mouse move. Okay, so the system places the message in the post message queue. Okay, for us, we retrieve that message using the get message function. We put it into the structure, the message structure. Then we call the dispatch message by reference. So okay, we're giving a pointer here, so address. The dispatch message is going to take the information from that message and send it to basically call our window procedure and forward that message information to our window procedure. Then we're going to, here's going to be our switch statement. And here we, we actually going to process the mouse move. 
the mouse move message doesn't do anything for us. We're not calling anything inside, but we're still processing it because we, we have a case, mouse move, and we're, we're returning zero. So as soon as mouse move message arrives here, it's going to return zero, and that switch statement, the function is going to exit. Okay, so the default is not going to be called. So you're going to exit from that window procedure function, and we're going to wait for another message to arrive and to repeat this loop. Okay. Here. So now let's go forward here. Uh, now the next thing is, as you notice, when we when we receive a bunch of messages here, not all messages went through the loop. Okay, let me show you what that means. Uh, I have a, a like here, like let, let me look at the code here. So I made a code like in our message loop here. Okay, I made like a print statement. So anything that's gonna go through a message loop is gonna ha have like a message loop beside it. Anything that's that anything that goes there that that, uh, that doesn't go through a message loop here, it's not gonna have that message loop beside. It's gonna have message. So what happens here is as follows. Let me look at the statement here. So message loop message seven nine nine. So message seven nine nine went through the message loop, but message one twenty seven did not go through the loop. Message fifteen, message three, message five, message seventy one, message twenty, message one thirty three, message seven. All those messages here did not go through the message loop. So what happened there? You may ask. Okay, here's the situation. Let me just here note this one. Okay. The operating system in the background also maintains what's called a sent message queue. The sent message queue, you can think of it this way. And when you send a message to a window, think then the message, the operating system will forward that message directly to your window procedure okay this may not be 100 percent correct what i'm telling you right now but that's the best way to think of it and the reason for that is that i haven't i haven't seen the the detailed implementation how they implement the message queue the post message queue and send messages how they work okay so the way i think of it as send message being a responsibility of the operating system to forward it to the window procedure while the post message queue, what we had before here, okay, post message queue is the responsibility of your code, okay, in your program to retrieve that and forward that, that to your window procedure. So that's the that's the way I see it. Okay, so in this send message queue, even though here we had a bunch of messages that were sent to our window, I'm gonna just look at two of them. Okay, we're gonna look at NC hit test, which I believe stands for non-client hit test and wm set cursor okay so what happens is that in this case those two messages are deemed by the operating system to be a higher priority and they are always sent directly to the window procedure so the operating system knows which window procedure to send it to because you told them which window belongs to which window procedure so it already keeps track of that so in that way it's forwarding this information to your window procedure directly okay rather than going through the message loop. So in this case, the message loop is bypassed, okay? And the operating system calls the window procedure for you directly and passes on that information there. So let's look at the, here, okay. So let's look at one of the messages there that we had. It was the window messages, so it was mouse move, okay? So the window mouse move has a 512 integer value, okay? The W parameter of that mouse move message indicates which virtual keys are down, if any. So when you press a key, the system generates a virtual code. Okay, so it, you can retrieve that information from the W parameter. The L parameter uh, is a little bit more complicated because L parameter maintains the X coordinate and Y coordinate of the cursor location. So when we had, uh, let's see here, uh, where did we go? Like a here we go. Okay, so I'm going to cover that in few minutes. Okay, so the y and x coordinate of the uh, of the cor uh, of the cursor location, but it's in one integer value. So a high order word specifies the y coordinate of the cursor, and the low order word specifies the x coordinate of the cursor. So you would call something like this. If this is let's say integer x position, so you you type in low word l param to get the uh, x coordinate 
and Y position, you type in the high word and then L param to retrieve that. W, and also very important, I have to mention W and L parameter values will depend on the type of window message being processed. So for mouse move, it's this is the information that you're going to be retrieving from W parameter and L parameter. For other messages, the W parameter L parameter might have different type of information. So you have to look at it, look up the documentation for the message that you're processing to determine <coughs> to determine which uh, what the W parameter and L parameter mean. What's the meaning of those parameters? Okay, and the return value in the like if you process that message, you have to return uh, basically return zero to exit to exit that um, uh, case. Okay, so like in our case, when we had this situation here, uh, when we are processing, is that here? Let's see. Uh, you know, this is not processing here. Okay, so when we process our mouse move, we we call it return zero. Okay, here. Okay, so we're returning that zero based on the specifications for that me uh, message. So let's look at the what the high and low word means. So as you can notice, this is basically 32 bits. Okay, this is an integer length value. Okay, so in a 32 bit integer, the top 16 bits are considered the high word, and the lower 16 bits are considered the lower. So here's one bit. Eight bits is one byte, which is a character. Two bytes is unsigned short, which is a word. Okay. And D word is an integer. D word is four bytes. Okay. D stands for double. Okay. So you can think of it this way. So the high word, so the data stored in this area here. Okay, it's the high word, and this is low word. So what happens? The, the system will store x in this location, and y in this location here. Okay. So let's look here at the details. So we had this, this, and okay. So here, so let me give an example. Let's say you move your mouse, and you have the x coordinate 155 and y coordinate 78. So the binary representation of your x coordinate is going to be this here, and y coordination. Uh, y representation of the 78 will be this here. Okay, so the uh, x location will be stored like so. So you get first bunch of zeros because it's 155, and will be then the value itself here. So the, the the first 16 parameters of that of that integer value from 0 to 15 would be the low word, and you would store the value of the x the y coordinate okay would be stored in the 16 through 31 okay so with the next location so in the 32 bits okay so the top so the the defined low word is d word l and then you casting l whatever l is to a d word where you're casting whatever it is l to a integer value to a four bytes so if something if you put like a character Let's say L is let's say eight bits. It's still going, in the end, it's going to be thirty-two bits long, and then from there you you casting that thirty-two bits. You're just extracting the the first sixteen of it. Okay, so you extract sixteen. So here's how it would look if you if you type in low word L parameter. This is how you, your value would look in the computer memory, the bit binary. Okay, so it's the six, first sixteen bits would be all zeros. Then the next eight bits here would be also zeros, and then you have you would have your value itself. So it would, it would copy the first sixteen bits, which is lowered, into the your memory location, and the top sixteen bits of the new integer would be all zeros. Yeah, so you can think of it as the high and lower. So basically, because the that like that came from uh, earlier days when the uh, computer memory was, was at a premium. Right, so that's why they so they compact in those x and y locations into the smaller into one integer because as you know screen is only so big, right? So you can store enough information in 16 bits rather than having to use the full 32 bits. Okay, so let's go further here. Mm -hmm. Okay, now the the high word is a little bit more involved. Okay, so here's what happens. 
the high word is also so the first thing you move you shift like as you can notice it d word l okay so we're putting everything to 32 bits and then we are shifting 16 bits so what will happen if we have high and low word right we're gonna shift so this high word basically is going to be shift into the low word location and the top is going to be filled with zeros and then for whatever reason they're doing the logical end for f and so basically they're saying this uh, integer value which is 32 bits which is they're putting the uh, putting end so zero like the logical end i think i'm not sure why they're doing this but there's probably a reason for it uh, but the, what it is, is a basically like 0 and 0 is 0, 0 and 1 is 0, 1 and 0 is 0, and 1 and 1 is 1. So in the end, they're getting the same value okay, out of it. And then they're extracting the lower the word. So the lower, once they shift the, the, the information from high word to the low word, they're shifting it. And then they're extracting it uh, <coughs> from, the, from the parameter. Okay, So this is how it would look, the high word representation here at the bottom how it would look in the in the computer memory okay so that's how it would be there okay let's continue on here so we did this we did this okay now we go here okay so the next message is the wm and non-client hit test so what it does this message is sent to a window notice to send it's not posted so it goes directly to the window procedure to determine what part of the window corresponds to the screen coordinates. So basically, it's trying to determine whether it's you know if the if the mouse is in the client area, is in the button areas here, one of those here, which is the minimize, maximize button, or close button, whether it's in the title bar, whether it's at the border. Okay. So here's the situation. The W parameter in this case is not used with this message. So the W parameter is probably zero. So it has no no meaning for this type of message. And L parameter specifies the L word specifies the X position of the cursor relative to the upper left corner of the screen. And the high word specifies the Y position of the cursor relative to the upper left corner of the screen. Okay, so it's instead of being relative to the client location, to the client, like here, client screen, I mean client area, it's relative to the screen location. Okay, so you know, make sure you know the difference. So why? Hey, so let's see here. Okay, so let's see here. So now we're gonna you need that test because we're gonna use the set cursor here. So what happens? The next I, the next message is the set cursor that we saw there previously, like in the post message here. Okay, right here, yeah, set cursor. So we're sent directly. So here's what happens here. The set cursor, the it's uh, integer value 32. The W parameter handle to the window. That has the cursor. So this is the double point is the handle to the window that that cursor is currently in. And the L parameter, the low or the word specifies the hit test result of the cursor, of, which is the VM non client hit test. And the high or the word specifies the mouse window message that initiated this event, such as mouse move. Okay. And it is sent to a window. Uh, send to a window if the mouse causes the cursor to move and mouse input is not captured. So here's what we're doing here. Let me show you here. Let's look at the, uh, let's see here. Let's, I went over, okay, let's see here. Okay, I'm gonna go over that in few minutes. Okay, let's look at the code here. So here's the situation. Let's, as you can notice, let's see here, look. As you can notice when my mouse moves over here, it's arrow, arrow, right? So we arrow, but when I move over the button, it changes to a hand. If I move at this button here, the maximize button is also a hand, and I move my mouse over to close, it's a hand, and everything else remains as button. So now what's happening here? Let's look at what a, a procedure. So first thing, we we are capturing the VM set cursor message. We are capturing to us, okay. Then we are extracting the hit test, which is, tells us basically where the mouse cursor is, in which location, whether it's over the client area, the title area, the button areas there, whether it's maximize button, minimize button, and close button. So here's the thing. So let's this thing here, case close. Okay, so we're processing this message. So now we're switching based on this information that we extracted. We, we are telling the system that if the mouse is over the close button, 
which is basically this button here, our close button here. Okay, we want to load the cursor. I'm not like I'm not going to go over the details at the moment. Uh, probably in the future videos, I'm going to go detail of the functions detail. But what we're telling the system basically to load the cursor with which is with the handle null, which is just give us the standard generic cursors that are available. And and the type we want is we want the hand cursor. And then we're telling the system to set the cursor for that window. So for that button, we want to set it to this cursor. So when the mouse moves over that button here, we want to set it to the hand, to that hand. We also want to do the same thing for that set cursor. We want to load, again, we're loading the cursor and max button. So in this case, we want to set, like whenever our mouse moves over this max button, we now want to set it to the, uh, to the hand. Okay, that's the maximum button. And this is the minimize button here. So we're also setting to the minimize button. So here it says uh, hit minimum button. Uh, so hit uh, test minimum button. If that that's the case, set the cursor to, again, hand cursor. Okay, so that's what, and then everything else, any other test, set it to the default arrow cursor. So here's the thing. So when our mouse, as you notice here, when our mouse moves over the title bar, it's an arrow. When it's client area, arrow. When it's borders, arrow. Here, menu here, like arrow. But when you go over those buttons here, there's one, two, and three, the close, the maximizing, it changes to a handle. Okay, so well, that's what we're doing here. Yeah, and then, so let's see here. And that's and each time again when we, when we let me show you here when look what's happening like see when I move my mouse here messages are being generated so we get lots of messages and we notice we generate those three messages the five twelve which is goes through the message loop the one thirty two and the thirty two the one thirty two is the hit test I think and the message thirty two is the set cursor okay and each time we're moving the messages are being generated so and as so I see they change here here and here, but change here, there. So like the buttons have different different type of uh, cursor handle than the rest of the window. Now, and oh, very important that not all messages, like you got some messages go through the message loop, while others do not go through the message loop. So you have to remember. Okay. Now let me close this here. Let's go back here. And now, okay, so finally, so here's the thing. So when, when the message is called, it's you know the system sends a message to like either get dispatch message sends the message to us or the system directly calls our message procedure window procedure I mean the message is received if we don't process that message okay we forward all this information to our default window procedure and this default window procedure implements all practically all possible messages that can be that can be processed okay that can be sent or posted or whatever the case may be so anything that windows all the window messages the default window messenger uh, can process so what happens if we don't process that message we're just telling the window system to basically process that message for us so there will be an implementation for vm create message vm mouse move message vm paint message vm uh, close message there will be default procedure to implement that so whatever we don't process we can think the path all this information just we have to basically send it to the default window procedure procedure for processing so now let's look here let me just close this here for a second okay so let's look here at the code so yeah so and that's the window procedure right so let's so let's uh, to reiterate and yeah so here's our message loop so get message right we we get putting the message uh, message into the message structure. Then when get message returns, we're checking the value. If it's negative one, basically we're saying here, you know, give us a, this error creating application text, you know, and exit from it. Okay, when the customer clicks OK. And here I put this message loop, uh, print statement, just to, to basically capture the messages to, to show you that, you know, that what messages are going through the message loop and what messages aren't going to filter them out, like to separate them, basically. 
Okay, and then here, so we have returned, so we have the signature for our window procedure that has to be. You have to declare the signature for the window procedure before the win main function, and then implement, you can either declare the signature and then implement it on top, or you can declare just the signature, and then you can implement it afterwards. You know, like you can retype the function name and then implement it here. Uh, you know, so the information. So very important that the, uh, the message that you have to read the documentation to, so, uh, to see what it's supposed to return. So we are returning, in this case, we are returning false value. Okay. I'm not sure what's the difference between the true and false for this type of message. The, you know, so I'm not going to go into details on that. Uh, but it seems to be working when we return false, which is basically zero. The system is working. Okay. And then we're processing the message. The way we're processing is we have another switch statement inside the VM set cursor message where we retrieve the low word L parameter, which basically gives us the hit test ID, which tells us where basically where the icon is at any particular moment. Okay, which where the uh, where is the hot like the tip of the mouse at this given moment, and then based on that. We're telling the system basically to set cursor if it's you know to that what type of cursor we want for that location where the mouse is. Okay. So I'm gonna end the video at this point here. Okay, and then you know we're gonna pick it up in the future. We're gonna expand on the window procedure and we're gonna also cover some additional stuff that we missed here in like in more details here. I think I've I mentioned to the create structure I think here. I have to cover that in detail, a little bit more detail for you guys. So yeah, uh, okay, so I'm gonna end the video here then. Okay, thank you, thanks.